Well, hello, good afternoon, good evening, depending where you are in the world. I know um, I'm fully caffeinated for once, actually, as I always am. I'd like to welcome all of you to episode two of the collaboration between the Institute of Strategic Risk Management and the International Professional Security Association's Fellow to Fellow uh, podcast, Fireside Chat, or as I had just mentioned, I guess you could call it a libation get together with our <laughs> caffeinated beverages. Uh, my name is Matthew Porcelli. I am the ISRM North America Hub Chair. Um, directly to my, well, I guess to my virtual right, is Satya Rai, uh, someone who needs no introduction. She's the CEO of uh, IPSA, uh, a great friend. Um, also, we are, this is actually great because the first inaugural call was um, Satya and I, but now our second call, we are celebrating Pride Month in June, and we have three distinguished guests here. We have, you know, Deb's... Uh, Debs Mills Burns. We have uh, Aaron Besson and Crawford Hello. Royce. Um, welcome the three, you know, thank you. I know I'm the minority here as far as I'm in the United States and all you guys are across the pond, but you're all my cousins. <laughs> you know, again, I, I, as I said before, I love how the US and the UK partnerships and especially all of us as security and crisis management professionals, this is what it's all about. Um, we're not gonna read blindly off of PowerPoint slides. This is just a group of colleagues at flesh and blood individuals with passion having a conversation. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Satya. Um, my friend, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, hey, our second podcast together. And how glad am I that I'm going to be asking the questions here. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, and for those that don't know me, um, Hello, everybody. Um, it's an absolute joy to welcome not my colleagues. This is my professional family. Um, and I cannot think of any better company to be um, having this podcast and Pride Month with. Um, uh, and look, everybody, I am CEO of IPSA. I'm uh I also wear various hats. I've just recently been appointed as a Chief Operating Officer for Leverage Security, which I'm excited about. I'm also a member of the Security Skills Board, the EDI uh, Forum I'm the chair of, which my wonderful colleagues are also part of. I'm also a committee member of the LGBTFM, but I, I wear various hats. And everybody and anybody that knows me knows that I do that because we impact more people within our um, within our industry that, that gives us access to do what's right etc and so on so look um, I'm going to uh, look, introduce this wonderful group of uh, uh, friends of mine and uh, let them introduce themselves and then um, if I can just ask look everybody knows what pride month means to me and uh, you know it's, it's, a, it's a celebration it's about us stepping into uh, uh, our our own light and owning it. It's about celebrating diversity. Um, it's about being proud, authentic, all these wonderful things. And I've sort of set the tone. But um, Debs, you're to my right. So if I can ask you to introduce yourself um, and then tell us a little bit about what Pride Month means to you, my friend. Yes, yeah, sure. Thank you. Um, and hello, everybody. Um, so I'm Deb Mills Burns. I've been in the security industry for 18 years, um, working my way up from a security officer on the front line all the way up to my current position now as Chief Commercial Officer for ZAM FM. Um, again, involved in, in various things within the industry because at the heart of everything that I've I've wanted to do in my career has been to drive people-focused businesses um, because that's what's important to me. I'm a firm believer that without your people, you haven't got a business. So um, for me, um, I'm a gay woman. Um, I have a son who has autism. Um, I've got a baby on the way, so I'm about to go through the whole maternity yeah. process at 44 again. Um, and I think if I could sum up those three things, um, now where I am in my life and what pride means to me now as what it did, did 10, 15 years ago, it's acceptance and belonging for me. They're the two key words that I would use. So, you know, prior to, to, to coming into the industry, I was in the armed forces. I served during the gay ban. Um, and I didn't even realise at that time the impact that had on me in my career when I transitioned 
into the security industry on leaving the forces because I still really didn't present as my authentic self. I was always worried about the perception. Um, I was always worried about if I belonged in a certain role and I was always worried about how people accepted me. Um, and I've been lucky enough to meet some wonderful people like Satya um, and another couple of ladies who mentored me in the past. Um, sadly, we lost one of them recently who were the real catalyst for me to be authentic. Um, so now for me, pride absolutely just means those two things, acceptance and belonging, because I think the world at the moment, we've lost community in general. When you look into your local areas or you look into where you, you know, where you live or where you belong to. And I think we've lost that. And the one thing that I know I 110% have my community in is in mm. my LGBTQ plus community. It is a community, it is somewhere where when you naturally walk into an event, whether it be Pride or whether it be the D Rewards or whether it be any event that is linked to LGBTQ+, you feel that instant acceptance and belonging. Oh, wow, Debs, that's fantastic. That's, that's the power of storytelling right there. Acceptance, belonging and community. Uh, you know, I was just going to say, really, Sadia, forgive me for holding your head up high. You know, you've, and congratulations on the new... Uh, Baby, you know, coming coming you. along too, you know, because that that yeah, that's, congratulations, yeah, yeah, that's 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 wonderful. Yeah. Now, Erin, oh, beat that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, oh, go for how it. How can I beat that? Um, <laughs> no, brilliant, and thank you very much for having me on. Yeah, my name's um, uh, Erin Bessim. I work for Safer Business Network as the head of training development, um, and you know, mm. uh, I. How do I get into the industry? Wow, God blind me. So I've been at Safe Business Network only a year, but it feels like more than that. Um, but you know, I started off in the police, uh, worked my way through. Uh, I left over 10 years ago now, um, you know, and I where I met my husband uh, now. And you know, I think the role I perform today and you know, why we're on the call, it's about empowering people, isn't it? We're here to empower people, we're here to share values. Uh, and show look actually we have to accept everybody everybody is very different you know it doesn't matter what community come come, come from everybody's different people and we have to celebrate that and we have to celebrate who we are you know i think for everyone on a daily basis unfortunately we're still having to come out every single day aren't we and tell them who yeah. we are because people make those prejudgments oh how's your wife how's your kids and yeah that's absolutely fine but we're still doing that and you know, for me now, I start to look at younger ones who are celebrating pride. And yes, mm -hmm. so I think that you said years are back when we were all you know, very young now, uh, let's say we saw it in a different light. We turned up and we thought, oh, my God, this is amazing. This is brilliant. But actually, I think as I've grown older, I've learned the empowerment, the, uh, the values of why we're still here and delivering it. Because what we're doing, we're all walking on that journey, celebrating who we are but telling the world that actually majority of the time it is safe for us to be out there and talk to people. And I think that's the most true value of it. And, you know, there's nothing better for me. You know, I'm coming to pride uh, with my husband and we've never done that together before. Um, beginning of March, you know, I've walked as a, um, you know, as a police officer many moons ago, but, you know, as an industry now uh, and what we've got here on this call and who we've got on this call is a strength isn't it? It's a strength of people saying, actually, mm -hmm. we're going to get out there uh, and talk about and celebrate who we are. That's for it really? for me. Yeah. No, that is... Uh, is everybody, uh, my connection dropped, but... Wow, uh, there's two Satyas. Uh, oh, my God. Wow. That's what was horrifying. <laughs> well, if there was one two is more people. than enough. One is more than enough. <laughs> <laughs> the other one is, is staring me down. Oh, 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 oh God. God. All right, good. The other one. No. Oh, no. Oh, she's the other gone again. She's oh, got a long she's... in action. No, it's all right. Listen, she, no, she'll connect. Yeah, I'm sure she was having it's some. back on. Oh, there she is. There she is. Yep. But no, Aaron, thank, thank you for that. And it's, I think we're we're getting there as a society. And, and, and you know what it is? People, again, people fear those, people, you know, fear those who, fear people let me rephrase people fear change and things they don't understand mm -hmm. that's what it is i mean me even you know and i had mentioned i'm very open about it. you know me you know I, I have a wife and kids i'm as a heterosexual male i don't look at you know i you know again i just people you know just to look at the individual 
not as what the orientation, but what, you know, by, by their character, it doesn't matter if you're, you'd be black, white, yellow, you could be, you know, the part of the, you know, the LGBTQ plus community. All that matters is the size of your heart and the strength of your character. That's it. Absolutely. That is it. And I, and I think that the more these conversations are had, and I think the more that that can be opened up, you know, because once again, we're chipping away. And Aaron, I think you said it best that, you know, the, it's a huge block of ice, but we got some strong ice chippers. And I think a lot of them are on the call here. Absolutely. I mean, empowering people and values and what's drawn me through to this wonderful uh, group. And, you know, we, we didn't have this community. We almost created our uh, LGBT security plus, plus community of professionals and role models that we never had. And, you know, I'll bring Crawford into this. You know, I, I've i only had the privilege of, you know, working with Crawford in the last couple of, um, in the last three years. That introduction came yeah. through the Pride, Pride collaboration. Now, Crawford, look, we we collaborate. I know our call is about the LGBT, you know, uh, plus community and Pride Month, but Crawford, we... We we collaborate on a plethora or on on a plethora yeah. of um, uh, uh, platforms. Whether it's you know presenting to the you're always the asking me to do something, so to you. You said it. You said it, Kurt Crawford. Yeah. So look, tell me about some of the things. Tell us yeah. about you, your journey, because it's a, oh, it's, well. it's an, again it's an inspirational one. Yeah, well, I'm Crawford Boyce. I'm the I'm the managing director of Wilson James. We're a private security company based in based in London. Um, it keeps me busy. I ended up in the security industry by default. I started off as a chartered accountant, a very unsexy career, and now I'm in security, an equally unsexy career. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm, I've heard I'm people use that term Crawford, and I still don't feel comfortable saying to my man. You're saying to people, yeah, I have this sexy career. Oh, wow. This is a real sexy career I got going. <laughs> no, I'm yeah. kidding. <laughs> yeah, well, my uh, my my current fiance, or my current fiance, my fiance. <laughs> it's you know, coming he, out now, um, everybody. He, 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 was head, yeah. he was head of marketing and PR at Harrods at once. That was a sexy career. You, you oh. know, I, could, you know I, I, I got that with, with, with great discount. So, unfortunately, I don't think we get too much out of out of our career, Satya. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Anyway, that 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 aside, um, I was I grew up in Northern Ireland, so that that brought loads of challenges. So I I wanted to pull the line of very religious um, mm. background. So I I had a wife and two kids. I still have the two kids. <laughs> I don't have a wife anymore, um, and that was a. I really only came out around ten years ago. So um, I am best friends with my ex-wife and it was a challenging time, uh, but in a much better place now. And really only since that, probably in the last eight, nine years, came out in, in the workplace. So for me, pride um, means an awful lot because it means that I can actually be my, my, my true self every day at work. And t- uh, pride where I met Satya three years ago was... Uh, my first pride ever, um, and there I was representing wow. representing Wilson James and representing the security industry, and it was it was a big moment uh, in in my life. So um, yeah, it it does mean an awful lot, and I've I'm I've got very involved. I I head up in the uh, exec sponsor for the LGBT plus uh, network at work. And, uh, you know, seeing people involved in that and drawing people from our community together, but also uh, the allies that we have across the business Mm -hmm. and realizing with so much support from the wider business means such a lot to me. And um, yeah, and Satya keeps me busy. That's all (laughs) I'm going to (laughs) And and you know what? And if I may, Satya, sorry for, you know, because I get inspired by all these. And it's amazing because, you know, as, you know, this, this fireside chat, you know, and it's amazing, like, has this, you know, orientate, you know, again, these, these stories, these, or, you know, I guess you could say orientation has this made, none of you have changed the way you protect people any different. Right. 
Exactly. And that's, that's the whole point. Absolutely not. It does. It doesn't, it doesn't make any difference because you're acumen in the security and crisis management field. Cause when Santi and I, when we did the first episode, we were talking about like how I need protection against my kids because the minute I get home, yeah. all they want to do. And I, you know, I have, I have young kids. All they want to do is beat me up when I get home. But my whole, <laughs> but my whole point, is we do it for whether it be, you know, again, you know, Aaron, you mentioned your husband, you know, and so forth. You know, we do it for the people we love. And that it doesn't matter in what form they come in. Love is love. It does, you know, as the adage goes, love is blind. But it's important that, you know, once again, that it can come in so many forms. But the art of protection doesn't discriminate. Hence why you have us here. Also, yeah. too, if you haven't noticed, and again, I'm very open with this. I didn't just, oh, no, the, the second Santi is back. Oh, she's back again. You know, Sake, we gotta talk about that clone you keep keeps popping in. Forgive me, it's the connection. I think it's uh it's uh, Crawford thinking if I get her off, <laughs> I, 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 her off. you know, I won't no, get you know, it's, questions it's, it's, or what I've less to do, yeah. but I don't know what it is. She hasn't paid her Wi-Fi bill. <laughs> and and, and, and well, lastly, I need to get a refund, uh Crawford, but I mean that. Just, I mean, the, the power of that when you add the mix of like religion and then um, the, the pressures of settling yeah. down and the kids and et cetera, cool for that. Honestly, it's just uh, a powerful. I mean, you said it took you that long to come out in the workplace, it took me 25 years to come out. In the work. But, you know, since then, you know, I, I think that the, the the direction that the industry is going in, in terms of all the people piece, all EDI, you know, uh, uh, in the last four years, and I think, and I know, I believe, the Pride collaboration in 2022 was a catalyst, Crawford. I'll come back to you. Tell yeah. me that yeah. was, although it was, you know, that it was a Pride, but actually it was the emergence of Role models. It was the emergence. Yeah. Oh, she's frozen again. <laughs> well, I'll jump in again. Like I said, that's why there's two of us. No, it's um until she join joins again. Actually, I was I was I was going to also say you know it's it, the role model portion is really important. But do you ever notice how a lot of organizations just tick the box? And this is what my point is. Yeah. There's yeah. a difference between just ticking the box and actually living by that. Um, and I'll give you, a, you know, it's, but I can see by those on the call and also those that I'm, you know, have you not only call my colleagues, but my friends also that they actually live by this, you know, sense of pride, pun intended, you know, cause a lot, I, there goes Satya again, she'll be back. Don't worry, folks. She's up. She's always back. But like, you know, and, and, and again, it's, um, you know, and, you know, a lot of, and, you know, Debs, if you don't mind until, you know, just have you noticed, and, you know, Aaron says we haven't, you know, we haven't heard from you, you know, we heard from you before. Um, do you, have you noticed, like, with this, with your, you know, obviously no names, because I know a lot of us are service-based providers. Um, have you noticed a lot of check-the-box mentality saying we're going to do this pride mentality just to appease Yeah, for the hell Absolutely. of it? And, and and I don't know about you guys, but that drives me nuts. I mean, especially from a security standpoint, we're just doing it because everybody else is doing it just because of compliance reasons. And Crawford, obviously, will, um, you know, obviously do you too. But Debs, what do you think? Is that something? Yeah, different? I mean, I'll give it without, without naming any particular companies or anything. You know, I'll just I'll just quote a previous employer where, where I was asked um, within Pride Month to could they do a piece on me um, to talk about, you know, because obviously I've got a wife. I had one child at the time. Um, and I said, yeah, of course. And then I wrote a whole kind of, you know, bio about me and my journey and 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 the paths I'd been on and accepting myself, et cetera, et cetera. And then um, I got it back because one of the key things, and it's, it's a big thing that I talk about now, the impact of um, the, the gay band serving in the forces. Mm -hmm. And I mentioned that. I, men I just purely mentioned in there that when I served in the army, it was illegal to be gay. That was actually just the sentence. And the marketing team come back to me and said, um, everything's great, but we just need to take that bit out in case we, you know, offend the forces. Or And I was like, well, if you're going to take that out, don't put anything out there about me because that's my truth. Um, yeah, right. You know, it's not, it's not your truth to kind of, 
you know, articulate how you want to articulate it. That that's my journey. Um and I've seen that a lot and I still see it now. You see people jump on the bandwagon um, and, and claim to be your greatest ally. But as soon as Pride Month's over, you know, they're not there for anything else in support and the LGBTQ plus uh, community. So I think it's still very much present. People show um, their true colors. And, you know, once you, you know, they say they're going to do something and then you see the way that they, yeah. you know, really support you, you know. Yeah. so Absolutely. Yeah. And I think there's still quite a lot of learning to go. And I'll just give you that experience where I, how I end up here is that I was working for this small organization and, and the managing director, the owner as well, he turned around and said, oh, yeah, look at the, look at the YMCA over there. And I was like, who are you talking to? But do you know what? Because I've been in these roles and I thought, actually, do you know what? I'm going to stand up to this. Wait, this was in the and Met, Aaron? I'm, I'm sorry. No, no, this, this oh, wasn't was in the say, Met. It's just yeah. a previous organization. Oh, I'm, geez, I'm sorry you went through that. <laughs> That's okay, but I felt more empowered because what I did is closed my laptop over, closed it down, gave him my mobile phone and said, if you ever talk to me like that again, I'll sue you. But then I just walked out. Plus, I to mention, you probably, so have, you, probably have more, you probably have more experience in your finger than you do in his, this person's whole body, too. Absolutely. So, But that empowered me, and that's why I talked about empowerment. I felt, do you know what? You Good don't you. deserve someone like me to work for you. And that's how people need to start okay. thinking. As actually, if we're coming across that, we need to stand up for it, don't we, really? Yeah. Uh, because we want to go to work feeling safe. We want to go to work feeling, you know, valued. And we want to feel great, you know. And, and that's what we want to do. So, you know, those type of actions can really push people's state of mind and mental health. Like, Debs, you know, that might, you must have felt awful. Um, but that, for me, just mentioning that, it's like, actually, do you know what? We can, you can make a difference and stand up because do you want that person to remember that? Mm-hmm. that's great no, that, that is that's really it's good for you and I, I, sorry Satya has just buzzed yeah, me, me too. Today that uh, she can't get on so all her connection is completely going down so she definitely hasn't paid the bill um, says please carry <laughs> on and maybe talk about some challenges and you've just done that actually Aaron mm-hmm. Well, actually, you know. I was going to go to go to Craw- go to Crawford as well. Yeah, no, no worries. That you see, and the thing is, we're in this line of work where anything can happen. Oh, oh look at that! See, Satya finds a way. She 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 actually crawled inside the. Uh, yeah. Actually, do they, wait, wait a minute. Do you do they? You, that goes to show how yes. behind the times I am. I was going to say she crawled in the cable, but the things are wireless now. So fiber, fiber. Yeah. I need. To, we need to get um our. Um, we need to get our money back and so on. But I'm I'm I'm, I'm yeah. sure the troops have kept. A conversation going, no, no, but no. Yeah, I, I think I was going to ask. Look, uh, we've all, uh, you know, we've the, the the journey that we've been on, and you know, we are. I believe we're building communities within communities where we we can be our complete selves in the workplace. We talked about empowerment. We talked about belonging, and and Matthew, honestly, these three professional, uh, uh, you know. Um, individuals epitomize that that they live and they breathe it in everything that they do they're on a journey with me and and i i'd like to just you know ask them just quickly that look some of the challenges that they've had and how did they overcome them so um i'll start with you again debs and if we just go around in the same order just a little bit about if there are you know, people people from the lgbt community that are out there not out and, and struggling what would that bit of advice look like because the stats I looked at, you know, today, 35% of our community still not comfortable to come out in the workplace. They've hidden their um, sexuality, fear of discrimination. One in 10 black, Asian, ethnic minority uh, members of the LGBT community have been physically attacked in the last year. This is, These are stats from uh, the Stonewall uh, research, uh, uh, YouGov research, which, um, in, uh, you know, uh, interviewed over 3,000 LGBT employees. So quite alarming, Debs. Yeah, I, I would say for me, the personal two challenges that stick with me is one, when I was um, going through maternity with Jacob, um, mm. how um, even, that was only five years ago, um, mm. my my wife was referred to as a father and she would only get the same rights as a father. Now, there's two challenges with that. Firstly, that she's not the father. She's actually the bio- biological mother of the child. Mm. Um, 
And secondly, actually, we shouldn't be treating fathers that way as well. So there was there was two things to that element. But what I was pleased to say, the organisation that I was with at the at the time when I challenged that because I was on that journey then of of using my voice and truly being authentic and, and challenging these things, they did. I have to give them credit. They did actually go and change their policies, um, and they actually did apologise for the way that that it come across. It hadn't been meant. Um, and then secondly. Another big thing that sticks with me, and again, it's only recent, so it's it's it, them statistics that you've just put out there absolutely are true, is, is the veteran piece. So I went and delivered a talk to a number of reservists only three months ago, and I was quite openly, you know, talking about being a gay woman, having children, my journey through the forces, et cetera, et cetera. And after the presentation, which had been about an hour a young soldier come up to me and she must have been all of 21, 22. Mm. And she said to me, Debbie, can I just say thank you? Um, I've been in the forces now five years and this is the first time I've actually seen a female who's a lesbian stand up and actually talk about sexuality and I'm going to be more fierce about mine now. And I think that's oh. that's the that's exactly what we want to achieve. I think all of us, yeah. Yeah. that's... That's the reward that we want out of the end of everything we do is just for another person to stand up, be authentic. Don't let any challenges define you. You know who you are, so stick by everything that you are. Be authentic and don't care about anybody else's views because that's all they are. Mm, fantastic. A truly inspirational uh, answer. And Erin, uh, over t- t- to yourself, anything else to add to that? Yeah, well, do you know, my, my, my husband, he's a empty heads head school teacher um uh, and for me it sorry um conversations need to continue it can't just end uh but they do need to start at a younger age now uh Mm -hmm. because that's where actually most of them will have um the biggest impact Mm -hmm. so and it's you know things are very different to where we were these days because actually we've got social media they've put in things overseas with social media but I think I think schools are a great way to start having those conversations, Brilliant. you know. But also showing where those support services are mm. as well, because there are lots of people. Because those friendship groups we all had play a vital part in everybody's journey, yeah. uh, and that mm. help you really establish who you are and actually mm. can strengthen who you become today. So I was very lucky. My career started, you know. Had a great group of friends. I followed some of some of them were gay. Went into the police force. You know, uh, mm-hmm. Hannah, our CEO. I worked with us uh, uh, other um, organisations, and it allows you to go on the journey, be yourself, and be comfortable. But those conversations always need to continue. But mm-hmm. it does need to start with all those sorts of help services at school as well mm-hmm. to help people. It's taught. Absolutely that. And that education piece and that training piece then yeah. should come into action in inductions in the workplace. Absolutely. And and you know, Crawford, you 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 epitomize this at Wilson James, you know, your core values are all, you know, set around respect and uh and people first and et cetera and so on. So, you know, you've empowered, you know, you've empowered a community within a community and your network, your pride network group is one of the most established across the industry. So yeah, to, to, you know, please elaborate a little bit on that and what that's meant to people, to your yeah, people. I- yeah, you're, you're right. I think I think you talk about challenges. I think for me, it's overcoming challenges is um, leadership by example. Yeah. So I mean, Aaron referenced yep. earlier. You know, continually having to come out, getting challenged at work. Somebody says something that's really inappropriate. Mm-hmm. I think if you're if we're going to be seen to be different and and do things in a different way. It's having the confidence in ourselves as individuals to stand up and say when something's wrong, to call it out Absolutely. so that other people then can see that. So you might have somebody struggling with their sexuality, or whatever, sitting in the corner and, and not knowing what to say. But if they see me calling somebody out on something that's inappropriate or shouldn't have been said, well, then potentially that will give them the strength to, to come out Mm-hmm. Um, or to be their their own true selves as well. So mm-hmm. yeah, I think leadership by example is is probably yeah. what I would. And, and to have so many leaders now 
from our community is quite something, I think. It's quite special because that's where that journey starts and in an organisation. That's how it's embedded. That's how it's filtered down as, as leaders. You know, you are living and breathing EDI every single day of the year with in your workplace, not just for Pride Month. It's not, you know, I know we celebrate yeah. Pride Month. It's every day, you'll all agree, Erin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's that, and this is not about excluding anybody from the conversation. This is about it needs that allyship. You know, Matthew's doing this call, uh, married with yeah. kids, with a woman, but it needs that allyship. So it's not about us just being, you know, us on our own, isn't it? It's that actually talking about it, Deb's what you've gone out and done. It's about everything we do is we're not wanting to close any doors, mm. but we want to take everybody to understand, you know, because we want to understand who we are and where we come mm. from. Mm. Okay, look, and now a quick 30 last seconds. So, and this, I'm going to steal this from um, Martin Gill. He does I was just about to say, that sounded familiar. <laughs> yeah, it does, Martin Gill. 30 <laughs> seconds. Um, okay, what's the one bit of advice that you have for, uh, you know, professionals wanting to join that industry? Do it. Yep. Do it. Do it. And I, well, they've only got to look around to see some of the key things that we're doing in yeah. our industry to know that it is a truly inclusive place. And the the reason why it is is because we've got amazing people like ourselves driving it, and we just need more people to keep driving it. As Erin mm. uh, mentioned, you know, our allies are just as important. Um, mm. So the more events, the more speaking, the more, as I always say, it's it's storytelling that's the power because that's mm. someone else is going through something similar mm. and i think that's what we do a lot in our industry you can see the storytelling so we are making the positive change we need to make excellent deb deb's crawford i that's what i was saying just do it because i yep. think long and short you'll you'll get more out of it than you put into it absolutely erin anything else to add I think just learning what I've learned from Crawford and Debs uh, and yourself is that just be your true self. Yeah. 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 A certain uh, liberation and freedom uh, comes with that. And, you know, the only thing, last thing I'll say is come and join us at Pride. Go, if you don't join us, go to your local Pride. And then that will, that will really uh, help you on that path of what it means to communities, not just the LGBT community. When absolutely. anyone asks me about what Pride Month means and what Pride means, I always refer to as family, togetherness, mm. you know. So, look, on that note, Matthew, we're going to ha hand back over to you. I can, I'm can. i in awe of these three individuals. They're on a journey with me and, you know, they know that I do what I do and it's because of amazing colleagues. And prof this is, honestly, and I never say this lightly, this is a professional family that I'm totally, totally uh, proud of being part of. And I also want to say thank you, Satya, for for this introduction to these three wonderful individuals and, you know, Debs, Aaron, and, you know, Crawford, just keep doing what you're doing because again, and for the, for the wider, you know, group, you know, just, you know, don't, I just, as I've told it, just like my told anybody I've ever mentored, don't let, you know, ignorance and stupidity stop you. Let it fuel you. That That's the way I look at it, you know, yeah. well, you know, because again, they're just trying to bring you down and be miserable. <laughs> <laughs> don't be that use that passion to drive you forward you yeah. know that that always helps so you know with that you know this this ends episode two you know and we're gonna be uh you know again you know on behalf of satya and myself you know again debs aaron crawford thank you so much you know for uh lending us you know these the, the stories your your insights oh. you know it, it, they're very very inspirational and powerful um with that, you know, on, on behalf also of the ISRM and, and, and mm -hmm. IPSA, thank you. And everybody, uh, be safe and be yourself. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. Uh, thank, thank you. Take care. Bye.